We are getting closer to the 2024 total solar eclipse and clouds are still looking like they're going to be an issue across parts of the path of totality. What's going on guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to have an update to an earlier video that gets into more of a high resolution look of where those clouds could possibly be on Monday, April 8th. Then we're going to give you that 3D path again with the timeline and local time and with the cloud cover overlaid on that so you have the best opportunity again to see where clouds could impact. And then we're going to have an update update on the devil comet some of the cool things to look for that's also known as comet ponds brooks again we'll get into all that through the course of the video if you want to stay updated on all things weather you have to hit subscribe do that for me if you want to join the team as we talk about the weather and sometimes these cool astronomical events that impact a lot of the country in mexico and into canada as well all right so here we go here is the update the path of totality there right toward the center of your screen and this is going to be into the early afternoon when the maximum eclipse when totality totality occurs the white on your screen represents the cloud cover so you see in parts of the resort towns of mexico and through central mexico it'll be partly cloudy where i think we're going to have the biggest problems in terms of cloud cover and again this is not set in stone just yet we could still have some things come into our favor across parts of texas but that still looks to be the biggest problem area for thick cloud cover especially in southern texas maybe some improvements closer to dallas and southeast oklahoma certainly i think a little bit of improvement in parts of arkansas still looking okay anyway in southern missouri into parts of southern illinois still looking okay in central indiana there could be a few clouds trying to come into play across Lake Erie, both on the Pennsylvania side, the New York side, and in the Ohio side. The best opportunity, I think, weather-wise, to see the eclipse across the entire country still looks to be upstate New York into Vermont, New Hampshire, into Maine, and then into New Brunswick. That looks to be the best part where clouds will look to be anyway, look to be the best and skies will may stay mainly clear what we're going to look through now and i have a bunch of pause points in here so i apologize if i go through your town but we are going to see a lot of stops here so bear with me as we try to get through as many towns as possible during uh, close to the path of totality here we're starting things off when things get underway in the united states this is going to be totality now at 1 27 in the afternoon central time this is all going to be local time the white on your screen represents the cloud cover again where you see yellow that's going to be clear sky so you see here san antonio still kerrville into junction texas we are still looking very cloudy same for us into austin waco one of the best spots to see the eclipse again from a totality perspective however it still appears that clouds are going to be an issue this is going to be 1 36 local time as we go rolling through fort worth into dallas note again we're not that far away from clear skies i mentioned before that yellow indicates where we're going to see some opportunity for some clearing and we do we have that just outside of the path of totality so dallas fort worth we're not out of this yet same for us into tyler southeast oklahoma we're looking pretty good at this point anyway into bethel into uh, parts of uh, Missouri, just on the other side, the south side of Fort Smith. Again, we're not in totality in Fort Smith. So if you're in downtown Fort Smith, you need to just drive a few miles to the south to get into that path of totality. Although, as you head toward Hot Springs and Little Rock, there may still be some clouds around uh, closer to Jonesboro. We're looking a little bit better. That's in Arkansas, I should say. I think I misspoke and said Missouri, so I apologize for that. But as we get into Poplar Bluff, Missouri, Things are looking pretty good. Southeast Missouri looking, again, a little bit better than what it did the other day. Evansville into parts of Indiana. We're looking a little pretty good. Terre Haute, Bloomington, still looking pretty good. Into Indianapolis, partly cloudy skies are going to be there for us into Muncie as well. Some gray blotches popping back up into Dayton, into Springfield. But all in all, things are looking okay into eastern Indiana and then into northwest Ohio. We're looking at 310 local time now where totality will be over us in Muncie, into Jefferson, into Springfield, into Dayton, Ohio. Fort Wayne again, totality is on the south side of town, so you're going to have to drive a few miles south as well to get in again 99% does not cut it for this it'll be cool but to get all the marbles you need to be in that path of totality Toledo we're going to see a couple of minutes of that uh, we're looking okay right now as we get into Cleveland I think there could be a few clouds popping back up same for us into Akron but still looking okay same for us into Erie Buffalo 
Model guidance has shown us in and out of some clouds. I always say this again, right along the lake, any of the Great Lakes, the weather can be so unpredictable even leading up to it within just a few hours. So again, it's always going to be dicey if you are residing and trying to hope to see the eclipse along Lake Erie or Lake Ontario. Uh, you see that there right now anyway, Watertown looking okay, Syracuse looking okay, Rochester, New York also doing okay. But where we have, I never want to say a slam dunk when it comes to weather, but for the last two weeks now, with ensembles and other model guidance, it has really looked like upstate New York, where we are now, just to the east of Watertown, into Tupper Lake, New York, to Brooks, into Plattsburgh, into Burlington, Vermont. We're looking okay into St. Johnsbury as we move into from Vermont into New Hampshire as well. Looking good. Maine in totality. Looking fantastic for your weather. This is 332 Eastern Time. Looking great. Into Jackman, into Troutdale, into Lincoln awesome viewing and this continues into new brunswick we had a few clouds shown on the last video here as we move into 435 local time in new brunswick but those clouds have pushed on out of here so things are looking much much better even for us in new brunswick and they looked looked uh, pretty good as well prince edward island awesome viewing as well and then as we move into newfoundland i think we're going to have a few clouds around but it's looking better than what it did uh as we as we looked at the previous uh, model update earlier into the week. So there you go. There's your 3D path uh, of totality. Now, the reason for the clouds, and again, I always like to give some kind of optimism uh, when we're especially we're looking for uh, almost a once or twice in a lifetime event like a total solar eclipse in totality. The thing that we are up against here is this upper level low pressure system. You see it kind of digging into the Four Corners region into the desert southwest. And what that is doing is pumping in some moisture from the Pacific right on into Texas. It's these large-scale weather events like this that give you a little more confidence. The ensemble guidance has been showing that for quite some time. Uh, the model guidance as we got within range over the last 10 days has also shown those clouds in Texas. And it's because we do have a bigger feature digging down the west coast of the United States, the supply Texas with some of the moisture. So again, not only do we have the opportunity for cloud cover right in through here, we have the opportunity for rain. Now we do have an upper low here over Minnesota too. So if we're hoping to get to catch a glimpse of the partial eclipse. We're going to have some issues into parts of the upper Midwest, Wisconsin, into the UP of Michigan, into the Dakotas, into Minnesota. Uh, we also have, again, we're watching and where I mentioned about downwind of Lake Erie. Note we have the, at least in the upper levels, the wind out of the West over the lake. So downwind of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, reverse that order. I said La Lake Erie's right here, Lake Ontario's right there. We could have some clouds downwind of the lake, especially. Here we have another upper low right there, but look in all the kind of where the non-colors are. And the red, by the way, is what we call vorticity, meteorologically speaking, the amount of spin in the atmosphere. So that's our upper level low there, but note the arrows. They're coming out of the north, so pulling in some of that dry Canadian air right on into upstate New York, right on into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. We also have uh, that nice snowpack there, and when you get a nice deep snowpack, that helps to make a mini localized area of high pressure as well. So there are several things in play here in New England that are really working in our favor to give us a really good view of the total solar eclipse. So... I know a lot of people have their plans already set in stone to go to Texas. I'm not saying it's a total loss just yet. It's not looking the best. If you're in New England, you're looking really, really good. And if you have yet to determine where you want to go, my suggestion would be somewhere in upstate New York, into Vermont, into New Hampshire, and into Maine. Weather-wise, anyway, that is where it is looking fantastic. All right, so an update here. One of my favorite things, I've never seen a total solar eclipse in person. It's on my bucket list. But uh, some friends and family that have gone out to see it, the coolest thing that I think is possible is to see the planets in the middle of the day. Yeah, I know. I've talked about this before, that you can see them at night. But it, there's just something about it going almost dark and seeing some of the brightest planets in our sky. Yes, Comet Ponds Brooks is going to be out there. Still, though, it is not able to be seen with the naked eye you need to have a telescope or binoculars and find jupiter that is going to be visible to the naked eye as totality happens so that's going to be just to the north and west of the eclipse venus is also going to be very very bright just to the south and east of the eclipse in 
in view there. So you find the sun's corona, then you can easily see these things. Mars is going to be a little more on the fainter side. Same, same with Saturn, but you'll be able to see both of those as well if you're in the longer portion of totality to let your eyes kind of just uh, adjust just a little bit. But again, still a couple of days for maybe... Comet Ponds Brooks, aka the Devil Comet, to do one of its unexpected bursts and to give us a nice treat during the total solar eclipse without a telescope. But again, also, I want to caution, be very, very careful, because if your telescope or sun or, or binoculars are looking toward the sun during totality and then the sun starts to come back out again, your telescope is in that region of getting that sunlight, you can damage your eyes. So again, you have to know where to look to find Comet Ponds Brooks if that is something that interests you uh, to find during totality of the total solar eclipse. If you're not looking at that, and again, any part of the partial portion of the eclipse or just looking at the sun in general, you need to keep those approved solar glasses on or NASA recommends the 13 glass if you have welders glasses or a welder's helmet. It's got to be 13. They say 12. You can look at it, but... Don't look at it for a long period of time. But some of the coolest things I think you should look for, the bright planets in totality, of course, the sun's corona and the diamond ring effect. That is the main event here. That's the Super Bowl of the total solar eclipse. And then there's that shadow banding on the ground. Again, that is super unpredictable where in totality uh, that kind of shows up. But if you see some weird moving things on the ground, that's what they are. They're called shadow bands. There's also... Um, what you can look for in the partial part, if you have leaves on your trees, and yes, people on the northern side of the country have pointed out that there are no leaves on the trees. I know that. But in the southern half of totality, there are leaves on the trees, and they give those crescent shapes on the ground. And again, you can see that in the partial portion of the eclipse. So something cool, uh, those leaves act like a pinhole camera, and uh, there's just a lot of other cool things to see. You can do that with a colander. Uh, you can take it out into your driveway or on the street and just don't get hit by a car. But you can put that, you can put that uh, put the colander out, let the sun shine through, and then those little crescents of the eclipse will be projected uh, onto the ground as well. So there are a lot of cool things to take advantage of, even if you're not in totality across the country. And again, you can go back to the earlier part of the video if you want to look at the countrywide view of the percentage of the eclipse that you're going to see across the country and then where those clouds could be during the maximum part of your eclipse. It's been fun talking about the eclipse, guys. Again, we are going to be here. 1 o'clock, streaming live. If you couldn't make it out to totality or, or if clouds are ruining your view of totality, we're going to be streaming it live here on the channel uh, from Central Florida. We're going to have the partial portion from Central Florida, and then we're going to have uh, several cameras set up along the path of totality to give you the best view of the house across the country of this total solar eclipse so it's going to be awesome so join us there we're going to have uh i'm going to have a, an invite set up there so you can join and be all ready to go for one o'clock eastern time that's going to be 12 o'clock central that's when we're going to start our coverage as uh, the partial portion of the eclipse gets underway across the southern tier of the country at about that time thank you guys so much for tuning in if you're interested in all that hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up button you know the drill i love to know where you're tuning in from as well post in the comments and I'd love to know if you're traveling to the path of totality. We'll talk soon, guys. Thanks so much.